abrimos. Buenas tardes a todos. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for uh, joining us in this new webinar, Basic Guideline uh, to Make the Most of IEGF uh, 2022. The idea is to provide you useful information on this global uh, internet governance uh, uh, forum that will uh, um, uh, take place in Addis Ababa from uh, uh, starting in November 28th. This webinar has uh, interpretation and it's being also and also transcription into three languages, English, Spanish and Portuguese. We will record it and as new participants come and uh, the attendees that are already there will be able to um, uh, put their questions uh, in the Q&A panel and at the end of the session we'll try to uh, send uh, the panelists your questions. So, as uh, I said, we are very close to the beginning of this uh, global IGF. So, we thought of uh, having this meeting with you to discuss the key characteristics uh, that this meeting will have. We also want to tell you about uh, or to give you some tips uh, and uh, useful information so that you can make the most of the event. Either traveling to participate in Addis Ababa uh, in person or online, because as we all know, IGF is hybrid this time. Today with us, uh, we have uh, the MAG members of uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. What is MAG? That is the multi-sectorial advisory group of IGF um, established by the UN Secretary General. And although it includes people from all over the world, this specific webinar is regional in nature. So I'm going to... Um, uh, uh, introduce the people that are with us, uh, the groups, the colleagues uh, for MAG in the region. I'm Paula Otegi. I'm the coordinator of uh, multi-sectoral relations in uh, LACNIC. I'm a member of the MAG group in my first year, and I work on uh, internet governance uh, from LACNIC. Among other things, I'm in charge of the program Leaders. 2.0, that's a program that provides support to internet governance issues in uh, the region. Karina Vidarda is from Argentina. She is a, a, a consultant on cybersecurity. She has 25 years experience. She has worked on IT, uh, telecommunications networks, and then in uh, cybersecurity and information security in government uh, cybersecurity centers and uh, private companies. Hello, Karina. Good afternoon. Welcome. Hello, Paula. Hello, everybody. Thank you. With us, Amado Espinosa from Mexico. He's uh, an IT physician worked the, who works in the implementation of IT uh, systems and its applications for uh, uh, to improve uh, the uh, actions of the service providers, healthcare service providers. And he has worked, uh, in, he participated in the Global uh, Public Policy Forum. And in WITSA, he joined IGF and we see conferences. So welcome. Hello, Amado. It's a pleasure to have you here, Amado Espinosa. Thank you. 
Igualmente, amado. I'm very happy to be here. I could, Bruna Martins dos Santos is Brazilian. She's a digital rights activist. She's a member of uh, the NGO in Brazil called uh, Coalition for Rights in uh, the Network. And she's an independent consultant on uh, internet uh, global uh, governance, uh, the uh, responsibility of the intermediate uh, digital rights. She's very active on internet governance topics and she has been actively involved and participated in the relevant uh, uh, legislation of Brazil, of uh, the internet in Brazil. Hello, Bruna. Hello. Paula, thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Bruna. Roberto Zambrana is an old friend uh, whom you all know. He's from Bolivia. He uh, has a master's degree in telecommunications. He's an engineer and he's on, doing his PhD. He has worked on telecom and uh, ICTs for 20 years. In the last 20, 10 years, he has worked with ICTs in La Paz the local government. He teaches at several universities on undergraduate and postgraduate studies on ICTs, uh, information networks, uh, wireless and uh, network security. He connects the IGF in Bolivia and the regional, national and regional initiative of Bolivia. Welcome, dear Roberto. Thank you, dear Paula. It's always a pleasure to be with all of you, very dear friends. So I'm ready for today's session. Excellent. Thank you, Roberto. And we also have Alan Ramirez from Peru, who's a telecom engineer. He's a consultant on a telecom policy and professor of ethics and uh, communications engineering at the Pontificia Catholic University in Peru. And he works for the Ministry of uh, Transportation and Communications in Peru. His professional career in the public academic and consultant as consultant has to do with the development of policy strategies and uh, telecom, broadband plans, ethics, social responsibility, policy and public management, uh, perspective, sustainable development, and uh, rural collective connectivity, among others. Thank you, Alan, for being with us. Welcome. Thank you, Paula, for the invitation. Well, as you may see, we have a wonderful group of colleagues and friends, and the idea is to hold an informal conversation in these 60 to 80 minutes. We'll see how things uh, um, roll on out. So let's um, start with a very basic question. Since those of us here, uh, many of us uh, know what IGF means, but maybe others don't. And the idea at this meeting is to bring you the information starting from uh, bottom up, increasingly complex. So what is IGF? Something very basic, but necessary is the Global Internet Governance Forum the, man, uh, the mandate was created in Tunisia um, uh, in 2005 for the Information Society. And uh, the UN Secretary General um, entrusted uh, the organization of the new IGF, uh, and uh, that was the origin. I think that in order to understand the wealth of uh, this, uh, uh, the contribution globally, it's important to highlight that there are discussions on these issues, both locally that is in every country and also regionally. In our region, we know it as LAC IGF. These spaces are called local or either local or regional. We know them as uh, national and regional initiatives, NRIs. And in our region, we have several uh, levels of maturity for these uh, meetings, but increasingly we have more countries that um, uh, work with them. In the last uh, quarter this uh, year, many countries have been active in the in the IGFs, and the idea is uh, to discuss governance with a local uh, perspective, discussing things with the different stakeholders, and in a way 
those conversations that uh, take place locally and regionally are based on the global agenda. That is, these are sort of, uh, this is preparedness for the discussion that we're going to have next week in Ethiopia. What I mean is that all the communities share the same uh, concerns. We have very similar discussions, and we are going to see those reflected in this um, global um, encounter next week. So I don't want to bother you. I want to give the floor to our colleagues. And but wrapping up with the initial idea of what uh, I global IGF uh, seeks it to look for people, the multiple stakeholders, the multi stakeholders uh, to debate, to share good practices, to facilitate a common understanding as to how to make the most of the opportunities provided by the internet. And although in these spaces we don't have negotiations, we don't have anything signed, Global IGF provides information and inspires the people that have the power to um, um, make a public policy a public or, or in the private sector. So, hand in hand, with uh, this uh, a very basic introduction, I'm going to invite Roberto to tell us about uh, uh, a core thing that uh, of IGF uh, 22 that goes hand in hand with uh, this year's slogan. The slogan is a resilient internet for a sustainable, shared and common uh, future. And it will focus on uh, the issues that uh, stem from the global digital uh, compound. Uh, so, Roberto, could you tell us if you can start? Uh, could you tell us what this is about? Yes, sure, dear Paula. Bueno, esto arranca y vale la pena comentar un poco los antecedentes. Uno muy importante que has mencionado y que tiene ya varios años atrás parte en el mandato de los Estados miembros a través de una cumbre mundial que se dio en una segunda fase del 2005, que evidentemente ha ido y ha permitido que continúe este diálogo que se instaló desde el 2006 y que continúa hasta nuestros días en esta nueva edición en Addis Ababa. Pero algo que es también importante, además de lo que su, eh, en, en su momento fue eh, como rol de parte del secretario general de las Naciones Unidas, ya sabes, Kofi Annan, en esta oportunidad y, y durante los últimos años creo que el, el, el rol y la impronta fundamental que le ha puesto el nuevo secretario, el actual secretario general, que es Antonio, Antonio Guterres, ha sido realmente importante para darle un impulso a este proceso de diálogo, que más allá de las revisiones y evaluaciones que se han ido dando, eh, en, han sido testigos también todos, hemos sido testigos de la apertura de nuevos espacios de discusión, de diálogo, de debate dejando un poco atrás, y hay que decirlo así, porque esa es la evaluación general que se obtuvo, al trabajo que se estaba haciendo en el foro de gobernanza. Por lo tanto, esta, esta iniciativa que arranca, yo diría, con esta convocatoria que se hace a este panel de alto nivel el año 2018, que finalmente permite llegar a un informe el año 2019 de este panel de alto nivel, que plantea eh, justamente varios aspectos importantes, entre otros, uno muy destacable, que es que no se tiene que dejar a nadie atrás. Eh, finalmente, arranca una agenda de la Secretaría General para cada año eh, avanzar eh, un pasito más en este, en este espacio, no solamente ya de diálogo, sino ojalá generar insumos y además tomar acciones que verdaderamente aterricen estas necesidades que se identificaron en ese informe. Y es así que se presenta una hoja de ruta. El año 2020 se presenta esta hoja de ruta y entre nuevamente hay ocho recomendaciones, nuevamente la primera recomendación tiene que ver con alcanzar una conectividad global hasta el año 2030, entre varios otros aspectos que son de interés, y, el, y la última de estas recomendaciones tiene que ver nuevamente con el tema de cooperación digital a nivel, a nivel mundial. Y bueno, un poco después es que se presenta, un año después, se presenta la Agenda Común, otro nuevo paso eh, promovido desde la Secretaría General, donde se plantea esto que mencionaba hace un principio, que es este pacto 
eh, global digital o pacto digital global, como queramos mencionarlo, y que se tenía planificado para eh, discutir y finalmente arribar a, a un acuerdo que sea este pacto el año 2023 eh, en septiembre, pero que se ha extendido un año más justamente creemos para darle mayor, eh, mayores insumos a este diálogo que ciertamente es fundamental para no solamente nuestra región, sino para el mundo. Se espera que varios de estos aspectos que se han eh, planteado todavía no son eh, definitivamente estos temas los que van a quedar instalados en este, en este documento, sino justamente se reciben y se van a ir recibiendo todos estos insumos para eh, que se incluyan en esta, en esta Cumbre Mundial del Futuro, así se ha llamado este espacio que se va a organizar para el 2024, donde el tema principal o el objetivo principal va a involucrar eh, este acuerdo global, ¿no? este pacto global mundial. Y sin duda se han planteado ya algunos aspectos sugeridos por parte de la Secretaría, como nuevamente el tema de conectividad, de alcanzar la conectividad eh, universal y significativa, el hecho de evitar la fragmentación, que es algo que ha comenzado a eh, emerger en la realidad política vinculada al tema de Internet en varios países, no es reciente. Tenemos ejemplos interesantes que se han producido en el mundo, pero hay otros recientes también que sin duda pueden afectar la manera y la naturaleza que Internet ha tenido durante, durante todo su tiempo de desarrollo, de consolidación en lo que conocemos es ahora y que viéndose afectada pudiera cambiar la realidad en el futuro. Entonces es un aspecto que también se ha priorizado junto con otros que son de importancia latente durante los últimos años y han tenido presencia en los diferentes foros. Por ejemplo, la gobernanza de datos, que tiene que ver también con una aspiración que todos tenemos, no solamente en el contexto de privacidad de la información, sino de la protección y la responsabilidad is also present a recommendation, namely working with disinformation and hate speeches, etc. Therefore, the governance forum and those of us who are part of this multi-stakeholder group have been discussing first the input for 2020 of the results of the year 2021. This was the first hybrid format that took place. And based on all these inputs, discussions were made to see which are the priority topics. We also saw the possibility of leveling these with those prioritized by the General Secretariat. And it is quite good because in most cases, we have reached consensus in order to establish this thematic framework. And as we know, hay comunidades que quieren plantear alguna sesión. Those communities that wish to have a session in the framework, in the governance framework in line with these, can join. So this is an initial overview of what this role of the General Secretariat implies and the progress that is taking place. Ojalá, eh, so the idea is to consolidate this dialogue in the future, including more people in the debate and particularly to have a positive influence in the political decision-making. In the year 2003 and 2005, there was a World Summit. So what we're planning now for 2024, we think will be a great opportunity to renew the commitments that are urgently required to find solutions to the development of the internet. So, dear Paula, that is what I wanted to share with you in this initial participation. Thank you very much. So. There are many issues that have to be dealt with. And in order to continue with today's conversation, I think that the MAG includes the global community. And these are the discussions that we then take place during the event. I would now like to invite my other colleagues to also Tell us more about this so that those who are following us today can understand what the MAG is all about, how, what the composition, the tasks we carry out, and also regarding next week event. 
And maybe you can tell us about the experience of being part of the MAG. Alan, Camila, Bruna, who would like to start telling about the work we do at the MAG regarding global IGF. Well, I can start if you wish, and then we can see. MAG is made up of about 50 members, 40% government, then we have the private sector, the media, civil society, and the technical community. It was created in 2006 by the Secretary General of the United Nations. We are the multi-stakeholder advisory group. Would anyone like to take on from there? Well, Karina, I'd like to stress that the concept of multi-stakeholder participation is an invitation made to us by the United Nations organization so that all the stakeholders of society can become involved in this far-reaching movement, which is not only about internet governance, but also the role that the internet has in our lives. Like Roberto was saying, the Secretary General has reflected this not only in his speeches, but also in the documents. He personally attended the inauguration of the event in Germany. He was very well informed and the idea is that this possibility of that the, that the public sector and the private sector come together and discuss these issues, but also including the society in this dialogue is something that is most far reaching and should continue uh, contribute to leading the internet in the proper direction. Thank you. Bruna, you have the floor. Thank you, Paula. This is just to say that regarding the MAG, this is a multi-sectoral committee. It also has a program committee. And there are several stakeholders, like Karina said, this is, uh, we have the, IGF hosts, we have the private sector, we have the public sector. We have representatives from Brazil, we have representatives from Switzerland. So we had a meeting in Ethiopia too. The MAG, therefore, is a group that has a more global vision of the IGF program. So we organize the meetings, we look at the program and see which are, which are the implications. So I wanted to mention that these are some practical aspects regarding the work the group carries out. Thank you very much, Bruna. I see that Alan sort of left somehow. I think he wanted to add something. So with these comments, at least we have a vision of the role of the MAG, the multi-stakeholder advisory group. Now, each one of us is in charge of one of these sectors, but we also represent the MAG individually and we relate with other sectors. So I'd like to ask you from your standpoint, how, what is the relevant of, relevance of the IGF for the different sectors? Maybe you want to refer to your place of work and what each sector can do to contribute 
and make the most of the Internet Governance Forum. So the floor is open and I see Alan is back. Yes, maybe I can start, Paola. I had an issue with connections as might sometimes occur. Now regarding your question, I think this discussion that takes place globally, but also has a vertical nature in terms of a topic of interest on behalf of the different stakeholders with, from the standpoint of development, from the standpoint of gender, for example. So, so this is quite important for the policy makers, for example, if certain topics of interest are included in the top public agenda. So the evidence that can be developed based on these discussions can be used to sustain certain policies with the support of the private sector, for example. And one of the good things about the MAG is that opinions can be stated while recognizing the efforts of the different stakeholders can participate in complex issues such as microgovernance of the internet, as well as everything that can stem from access to the internet. Thank you very much. Well, in my case, Paula, I am representing the private sector for Latin America based on the experience of the Mexican associations that we have that are related to the Latin American Association of IT. And this is like a regional branch of WITSA. Now, the private sector also has an important role and participating in the IGF contributes to make it possible as entrepreneurs to learn about so many topics. We need to be part of the decision-making process in these forums. The future of how to make technology have a social impact and to strike a balance between the economic situation and what we can deliver to the end users. I'm sorry, the audio is not so good. So through the workshops and through the conferences, participation is possible in different groups. And to share our concerns in uh, the international business of technologies so we can discuss uh, how legal issues uh, um, will impact. So this is an invitation to all the members of the private sector to be part of this event and to get engaged uh, in these processes. Thank you. Thank you, Amado and Alan. There we saw, we heard the government, the private sector, Bruna, Karina, Roberto, would you like to make comments about your sectors? How do you think the IGF could be taken advantage of? May I, st I, may I start uh, answering? I think that for civil society, I represent the civil society at MAG, and my boss is, uh, uh, this is, IGF is one of the most important uh, events uh, for exchanging ideas and uh, for presenting projects and uh, giving reports of the civil society uh, developed during the year. So uh, IGF is a very important convergence point, not just the way where we meet and we can be together and launch things and have interesting talks, but also it's also a space because as it's multi-sectoral, we 
have a chance to be in, in touch with uh, the policymakers, with colleagues of other sectors, as important as civil society. So if uh, we see what happened with IGF in recent years, civil society in civil society is uh, the one that gets more actively involved in IGF. But we see the evolution it's had during the years, and we see what are the groups that continue to be there. Not only is that uh, very important then to present the projects and products of the year, but we can all, we also have a chance to have um, uh, exchange ideas at the same level as other st stakeholders. Well, I represent the civil society of Latin America, and to tell you the truth, this is a call for all those in the civil society, although I'm from the technical part, I, I represent the civil society because I think that in the internet we have the new social dynamics because everything is done through the internet. So it's good to include the government, the academia, all of the stakeholders. It's good for the, for the regular citizens, um, all society to participate in these debates and these discussions so that we can give our feedback and our beliefs. From our point of view, because the different wishes uh, should, uh, end up giving you a rainbow of uh, perspectives. And that's what IGF does. Yes, absolutely. Everybody pointed that out. All the sectors play a very important role to play in these discussions. So from the technical community, I think that we have challenges from the point of view of the topics that are discussed in the agendas. We know that most topics are not purely technical. So I also identify uh, uh, the challenge for the technical community to bring those uh, topics or proposing sessions to help us in topics that don't end up being so technical as the understanding of the internet, how it works, and the factors that have uh, uh, made the internet so successful, enabling development and innovation. So from the technical community, we have to give our view, but it is precisely what the speakers have said. We all have a lot to contribute to it. So, um, let's now discuss the structure of this global IGF next week. It, it's going to be the 17th edition in Ethiopia next week. And the slogan, the motto that was chosen by the community and defined in our previous work by the MAG is resilient internet for a shared, sustainable and common future. And this IGF will discuss five topics, um, five themes that are aligned with the Global Digital Compact um, uh, provided by UN. And I'm going to tell you those uh, five uh, axes that are connecting all people and safeguarding human rights. Another topic is avoiding internet fragmentation, governing data and protecting privacy. The fourth is enabling, um, uh, in, in Spanish it's habilitar, but uh, in enabling safety, security and accountability and addressing advanced technologies, including artificial intelligence as a fifth theme. So, um, now, I would like to ask Bruna, what was the process like to reach these access that will guide IGF? What kind of a public consultation process did you have to the global community and how the MAG worked to reach the, the end product, the, uh, to conclude to these five topics that I just mentioned, Bruna? Thank you, Paula. I find that um, we should uh, highlight this public consultation because today we tend to work with input coming from the global community. So nothing of what we uh, work with here uh, has been uh, asked for. As a matter of fact, 
uh, at MAG, we work with inputs that we take from here, from there, from the open discussions, uh, the public consultation processes. At the beginning of the annual process, when we are, uh, when uh, the IGF is being created, so we uh, call for a first public call, and. Um, and based on uh, the feedback that we get uh, from uh, the society, we decided that the, um, the key um, IGF themes uh, should uh, have some convergence or be coordinated with the theme that should be coordinated um, in the conversations. We understood that it was important to have those two processes connected because today, what uh, we are debating now also led us to debate topics on the IGF process and the digital panel and the discussion that we should bring more feedbacks and transform IGF into a decision-making uh, space. And so, so at the first meetings in the year, we understood that those two spaces had to converge, and that was basically what uh, uh, took us to those five themes that you just listed. So I would summarize it like this, as to the organization, the debates, and so on. We need to point out that uh, concerning the IGF program, it's not just the themes that guided the workshops. Uh, they were all proposed by the community, but these are the five themes that will be the most important sessions. So those are the key points that are repeated. So not only are they debated by the community, but they are more cross-sectional uh, themes too that um, um, touch on uh, different modalities of IGF. Your microphone is off. <laughs> it had to happen, sure. Thank you, Roberto. Yes, absolutely, Bruna. And I also wanted to add the hybrid aspect that not only is it going to uh, have, does it have to do with the, the attendees, but also the rapporteurs, the speakers, um, the um, panelists, that we may have virtual and uh, in-person uh, participants and speakers. So maybe you'd like to know how Mag handled uh, all these challenges of having this hybrid format. And if you wish to give any advice as to how to participate with this modality, I don't know whether Bruno wants to go on or any other uh, speaker. Yes, Roberto, go ahead. Well, actually, it's good to mention that in 2020, we had the first experience absolutely online, and it was a huge challenge for the organizers and for the attendees. It was a new world, everybody. We had to organize things uh, to uh, try to have at least the same number of people, participants as in previous years. And it was very interesting because we saw larger numbers it was quite, how could I say it? Well, it, it, very interesting in terms of the fact of he being uh, uh, online would didn't stop people. But in 2021, we had a huger challenge uh, because everything that we had gained with the online process, the idea was to uh, be have a similar numbers, but uh, with the possibility in person. So with this new hybrid format, the feeling needs to be absolutely the same in those that participate on site and those that do it online. One thing is to say it, but then it's more difficult to make it true. Of course, there were many problems, many failures, many flaws that we solved as uh, we uh, moved forward, but people didn't get discouraged. People participated and from their remote spaces and on site. And now that you say it, uh, now that you ask uh, what will happen, as you know, and the other colleagues know at the meetings, we really emphasized this uh, issue. And uh, the dialogue with the, organize, the organizers of the sessions, we uh, are trying hard to 
um, uh, um, uh, follow the steps we need to have it so that everybody, either the people who are there in person or online, may not lose uh, the quality of the dialogue. So that's what I wanted to say about your question. I would add, Roberto, thank you for, for being with us, by the way. I would add that in the end, the United Nations is a political body. It arises as the body responsible for protecting uh, human rights, among other things. And of course, the, the governments play a very key role in the Security Council, that is the top agency or body of the Secretariat in decision making. Now, the fact that at present, it's being opened not just for the in-person participation, but also online. That's a very important milestone that we have to make the most of, because in the end of the day, as I said, as it's a political body, the regional groups uh, uh, can uh, work uh, in East Asia or in Africa or in Europe or in North America, they have their own guidelines as to how they interpret the uh, the way the internet should be handled. So this opportunity, as was described by Cecilia and Roberto, really it's incredibly complex because ultimately, I insist, the, it's the UN that sets the security guidelines uh, uh, for uh, the verification, the monitoring guidelines, and any of the events that uh, uh, are held by any of their organizations. So the fact that we have a chance to be able to participate in an event like this remotely is uh, hugely important, even if it is uh, just to understand who is saying what, uh, what are the trends, what uh, are the measures that we have to adopt for decision makers uh, locally, etc., etc. So I think the opportunity is a very valuable opportunity. Thank you. Yes, without doubt, Amado. I would like to know if the participants have any comments or questions. I want this to be interactive. So if there are any questions or comments, please, uh, you're welcome. I see that in the chat. Nobody has included any comments. Sandra, maybe can you support, please? In the chat, Paula, we have no questions in the Q&A box nor in the chat. So I encourage you to please feel free to interact if you have any questions or any comments. So everything is welcome. Thank you. Comments are welcome. So in the meantime, please include your questions in the box or in the comments. So from what we have been saying, because this has a local vision, let us see how we can manage to have a good participation of our region in this global IGF edition. We are aware that this takes place in Ethiopia, which is far away. This poses challenges in terms of participating in person because of the distance, because of the cost, because of the recovery in the post-pandemic world. But the hybrid option, this format that we have been referring to, allows participating and making contributions and having great interactions. So my question is to Roberto, to Alan, 
what do you think are the mechanisms or the opportunities that we have as a region to be active and to participate actively in the global IGF, despite the difficulties posed by the distance, for example? How do you view this? Well, one of the good things of the pandemic, in spite of all the bad things, has been this lesson learned, namely to be able to participate in different spaces and events without having to travel. So IGF is no exception. So participation is possible regardless of traveling physically. Of course, in-person participation has advantages that are difficult to replace. But if you have the intention of making contributions, of participating, and of making contributions and ideas, the fact that we have these options and mechanisms is essential. This is open to everyone. There are no restrictions whatsoever. People might think that this is a closed space that is only there for the delegates from the countries or a community. That is not the case at all. It is open to every single citizen. You have to register in the IGF website, which is intgovforum.org. And you can register there and also for the activities that you are interested in. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. I fully agree with Roberto. The hybrid format and the possibility of connecting virtually to the IGF really opens a whole window of opportunity for those who are interested in this and also to share your interest on topics and so that people from different areas can also participate. In the case of the region, I think it is important to have a significant number of members. I think we have quite a, number, a few already. Uh, so I think is, this is quite substantial in the sense of having presence in the region. Of course, the topics that are proposed are interesting. Some might be more interesting than others, depending on the global standpoint or the Latin American standpoint, as well as the challenges that each country has to face. These are addressed at dealing high complexity problems. And high complexity has to be viewed through collaboration models where all stakeholders can participate actively. And that is what we can promote through this webinar, as well as through other local IGFs, such as LAC IGF, as well as all the IGFs. For example, the one that will take place in Peru after the global IGF and the one that will be taking in place in Bolivia afterwards. All this opens up the doors to generate debate on such relevant topics. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Would you like to add anything? We have a question in the Q&A. I'll read this out for you. Julian La Torre says, hi, I would like to ask if the global the, the the global governance forum will have a voice as local networks as a discussion block and how can you participate in these spaces in these community spaces so in other words how can our region be active in the discussions who would like to answer that question well yes yes amado as you mentioned, Paula, the structure of the program, and like Bruna was saying, this is addressed at those aspects that are of greater concern today. 
among the public policy forum, uh, uh, public policy developers. And this regarding the development of the internet. So these are those topics that can serve as uh, guidance in the sense of how can we participate and make contributions in the region. The conclusions drawn from that can be used as the uh, to be included in the final report of the meeting so that they can be scaled up and conveyed to the special envoy on technology. So insofar as we can have specific positions from the technical standpoint, political standpoint, social, academic, if this can be conveyed so that they are taken into account to be included in the decision-making process in the direction that we wish, will then lead to success. And as a region, it is very important to focus on topic number five, which is high technology. It is quite different if you compare continental Asia or China or all the Asian countries. They are trying to figure out how they manage in artificial intelligence, big data management, and the new trend of virtual reality. So insofar that should be dealt with and how the legal and ethical framework can really deal with all these things. So if we have a specific position as regards how these big algorithms of the major corporations and how these should be taken into account, reflecting the social reality of Latin America, for example, and how the big data is handled, which is the input for machine learning and so on. So how the use of all these tools can strike the balance that we all wish to have. In other words, let us expand on some of these topics. Let us see in which of the workshops we can participate as a region and see what is the position that we wish to convey to the forum. If surveillance, if cyber crime, And then if we can scale up that position later on. Thank you, Amada, great. Would anyone else like to add anything? I would like to add something. Yes, Alan, go ahead. Yes, these are emerging topics. This is not only of importance for emerging countries, many countries have a, a divide. So this is part of the discussions that are taking place. This also involves protection of human rights. Many workshops deal in a more direct or indirect manner, many of these topics. This is a very important point of discussion. And the fact of including this in the multi-stakeholder arena is very important, not only to include this in the public agenda, but also to build evidence on the different possibilities offered by community networks in many of the countries, especially, especially countries as such as us. Thank you. Roberta, I see you're raising your hand. Thank you, Paula. If you allow me, I'm going to share 
my screen to see what participants can do. I will show you the topics that will be discussed once you register in the page I mentioned, intgovforum.org. Once you register, you will be able to access the different menus. You will see there the different sessions, as you see here on the list on the screen. If you enter one of these, for example, the one of the workshops proposed by Como parte del the community los and which followed the processes that were described earlier on, you will find the list grouped under the five topics. The community networks theme has been included here, connecting all people and safeguarding human rights. Very rapidly, we can see that there is one that has to do with rural community e inclusión digital. networks, electricity and digital inclusion. There is another one. Efectivamente, on la... overcoming effectiveness challenges in community networks. So if you click on that link, you will see a description of that workshop. Here you can see that we have participants from our region. For example, Eileen Cejas from Argentina, among other colleagues, will be speaking about this topic. There's no specific segment for Latin America. These are communities that get together and promote or propose topics somehow or other. So you have to enter and look at each of the sessions to see which you would be interested in participating. Thank you, Roberto. Great. It's good to see it like that. It contributes to really learn how to access this and based on the different interests to pay attention to this. At the end of the webinar, we'll be making recommendations as to how to organize this immense number of sessions that will be taking place at the IGF. Someone in the Q&A made a comment on the intersessional processes, and I'd like to add this to what we have been stating. All of you are most active in that sense. And between the annual meetings and so on, the community is continues working on many activities, which then lead to this meeting with some of the conversations already in progress. This is what we call the intersessional work. And regarding IGF, these are called the best practices forums, the dynamic coalitions, the policy networks, all these are the platforms and the groups, as well as the forms that the IGF has in order to drive forward all the group between one annual meeting and the next. So if you like, I can ask you one by one because you all played a very important role. This is not just about getting together once a year, but also carrying out efforts throughout the remaining of the time. Roberto, can I start with you? You're so active in the NRI groups, maybe you can Tell us how the NRIs will be participating in the different sessions and meetings. How have you worked and how are you getting ready for next week? Thank you, Paula, for your question. I'd like to link this question to the first one you made regarding the benefits the forum has for all participants. And I would like to link this because we have to understand that the dialogue is very important. Y más sencilla, además, y más natural la participación a nivel global, en este caso, en este IGF. Y eso supone, entonces, eh, identificar los espacios de diálogo que hay en nuestros países. Por suerte, so that implies identifying the dialogue in our countries. Fortunately, the, all our countries have regional initiatives that are known um, uh, as uh, national IGFs. 
um, uh, IGF forums in Argentina, in Uruguay, in several countries. And that is the first thing that as members of the communities of any of the countries, we need to participate. We need to interest ourselves because I'm sure that we all have something to contribute with. So in, in, in those space, it's not a space that we are going to listen to uh, great experts and we ask questions, but it's a space where all of us have some uh, opinion on the issues that are being debated. And it is extremely important to be able to make comments and to speak up in uh, these uh, cases, because the, it's been a great uh, step forward in the last uh, LAC IGF, Paola, the possibility of uh, putting together, um, of convening the people that have worked in uh, the programs committee of LAC IGF and the work by the governance forums in the region, organizing the forums essentially, but also looking for the way to articulate. By the way, for many years, this has been something that we've challenged uh, when we consider the participation in the global forum. Uh, we were concerned about the lack of articulation, not just uh, in our region, but in the various countries. The articulation that we should have between the local um, uh, governance forums and the regional governance forums, and from those to the global forum. And I think that many of the stakeholders that many of us who participated have tried to contribute in that regard. So the result of the last regional forum, like IGF, had this uh, contribution. I think it's an interesting thing so that we can consolidate this articulation because only that way can we identify the common topics that we are interested in as a region and what are the different ones that we show the uh, degree of development that we have, because not all the countries are the same, but it's also important to see them so that we can articulate and discuss these topics in a global context. All this starts very early in the year, and that's why it's so important for us to contribute from the beginning, all along the year, in the governance forums that are established in each country and in the regionally to be able to consolidate and articulate all these voices and to have more effective spaces um, as sessions and uh, then afterwards in the global forum. That's why it's so important to put these two questions together because there's no doubt that the work of the countries will be very important for a positive influence uh, in globally. I would add, Paula, that with regard to the best practices and uh, the BPs um, and the coalitions, the dynamic coalitions, I think that the work there that is being done there is very interesting. And I hope that the people that participated in the event will be able to see the conclusions that the different groups in, the, in these areas are approaching. Personally, I am in the coalition that works with uh, digital health. And to tell you the truth, the relation, the, the capacity to convene people uh, of this um, uh, coalition in, um, uh, in, and working with the people that are involved in health, in the internet society, and uh, in um, the ICT forums, it's very important and it manages to, um, uh, to take um, or to learn from other initiatives that so there are stakeholders that are sort of um, uh, fragmented and if these best practices in a way manage to concentrate this information to concentrate the efforts and try, trying to see how, as a group, we are capable of drawing conclusions uh, uh, that can be considered and brought to the table. The definition of public policy that in the end needs to be 
heard at each of uh, the in each of the agencies of the United Nations and uh, the Secretariat, and so that the Secretariat may hear what uh, is discussed in these forums, as Roberto pointed out, and we need to see how we can be heard or considered um, as conclusions are drawn at the General Assemblies, where we have representatives of 192 countries. Thank you. Thank you, Amado. Yes, there's no doubt that all this work, both by the working groups of the dynamic coalitions and uh, the uh, best practices forums, have that objective that you just described, indeed. Now, going on with uh, what MAG has done in these intercession groups, I wanted to ask Bruna, because I know that she's working in the policy network of uh, internet fragmentation, and uh, she's also, Bruna is also working with the best gender best practice forums if you so if Bruna if you want to tell us following this uh, line of conversation of Roberto and Amado what does this work consist of do you have any results that you'd like to uh, to share in this uh, of what you've done in this intercession period sure thank you Paula yes indeed I think that before we start uh, just discussing the topics specifically, let me say that all the best practices forums as well as the dynamic coalitions, the community can propose new topics, new themes. The first, at the first MAC meeting, we define the future uh, works uh, between the IGF section. So it's very important that if you understand it's a question of the community networks and the community understands it. And if there's interest uh, to propose uh, the coalition um, or something in, uh, if, if, if you're interested in discussing a specific theme, it's valid to leave that door open so that the Secretariat may contact us, the members of the MAG, so that we, we can also propose themes for intercession work. Now, talking about the um, internet implementation uh, policies, that's one of the things that came from the community. It was a very sectoral initiative. So um, uh, proposed by the private sector and the technical community to call the attention to the cases where the technical aspect of the public policy or legal or regulatory may present risks in the network in uh, the network that is uh, interconnected that we absolutely want to defend and with whom we work so the de uh, fragmentation um, is has been a concern and uh, we have worked with an intersectoral group and there are also open calls for the IGF communities for the list. Uh, during the year, we organized three webinars on fragmentations with uh, great experts in the area, people that have worked at this for uh, a long time. And now, closer to the IGF, we uh, reached a doc, we uh, um, de developed a a document that will be discussed uh, at uh, next week's IGF. That's going to guide us when, as we fight against the fragmentation of the internet, and we want to adopt that document. We want to test it, and we want it to be d debated. That session is going to be Wednesday, thirty at six thirty a.m. Uh, I'm a bit lost. And so the best thing is to say to always say UTC, and then depending on where you are, you decide what is your time. Another intercession effort when I'm involved is in uh, digital rights and gender best practices. So this year we are working on the impact of regulations through the uh, gender 
issues. And the idea is to generate conversations to see how we can have objective regulations that, well, how certain regulations may have an impact on women and, and other people in the world that uh, are uh, more vulnerable. So this IGF works a little bit differently. We have to submit a draft of a report to guide the discussion and to guide that IGF session. We, we've already seen it. I can put it here in the chat. It's the last day of IGF, December the 2nd, in the morning. By the end of the morning, we'll have this gender session. It will be at 10.45 UTC. Um, it might be like uh, the middle of the afternoon in Ethiopia. Yes, so yes, we have to put all those in the agenda. At the end, we may give recommendations if you can recommend things, but uh, we uh, thank you, Bruna, because you already gave us some ideas. So um, we still have 15, 20 minutes. We go on with Karina. I think it's very important for everybody to have a chance to tell us about their work in the intercession uh, periods. And Karina is precisely in the best practice uh, form of cybersecurity. Karina, could you tell us how you get organized? What is your research on the topic or whatever you want to tell us about? Thank you, Apau. Well, in the chat, I told you what we've done from 2018 to today. Uh, things that we've been sharing and more or less the methodology is for you to register if you're interested in cybersecurity and all of us together will debate the themes and uh, we'll um, uh, discuss the cybersecurity and during along the year we will discuss it in different uh, meetings for instance um, I, I let me I can tell you what we've discussed uh, since uh, 2014 uh, 2018. We start at the beginning of the year, and by the end of the year, as uh, Armando said uh, and Roberto said, we show everything that we did at our annual meeting. But in 2018, we um, uh, developed a, a document on culture and standards on cybersecurity, and we uh, uh, drafted some questions, and then we asked people to share their view and to answer those questions in 2019. We had the best practices on the recent initiatives related to cybersecurity. But the most important issues, the six uh, critical standards um, and uh, the um, open and uh, group of UNN, among other uh, 25 agreements that you have there in the link. In 2020, it had two parts. One is on cybersecurity policy formulation and international governance principles. And the second part is best practices regarding international agreements on cybersecurity. So we went back to the topic of the previous year. So everything is related and linked and in improving in terms of maturity. In 2021, we did analysis on the use of standards to promote trust applied to cybersecurity. In 2022, this has been divided into two parts. One is to mapping international cybersecurity rules and cybersecurity events. And the 2022 document, you can download the draft PDF and make your contributions. This is an invitation to all of you to make your contributions. And this has to do description of myth cyber crime versus cyber security. So how can you participate, register, participate in the meetings, make your contributions, collaborate, do research on the different standards, and then you see which is the one you wanted to study then you can analyze what that standard is all about. For example, the Paris Accord, uh, for example, incident management, etc. And then you produce your report. And the experience is great. If you can participate with the researchers from all over the world, 
on internet governance. It is really amazing. I love cybersecurity and I think this is such a great opportunity. You're all invited. Thank you, Karina. Yes, these are open spaces and we have to highlight this. The more the contributions, the richer it will be. And now, Alan, who is part of the Significant Access Policy Network. Alan, can you tell us about the work over these past times and the preparation for next week? Yes, of course, Paula. I'd like to start saying that MAG has different functions, also locally. And one of these is to promote links to decision makers with the authorities and with organizations that can be, be interested in different topics so that they can become involved in the processes in the specific case of the policy network and significant access. This is an expert group which is very prestigious. Roberto is also included in this group. We are well, very well represented. And we have a discussion on different topics, mainly three areas, connectivity that has to do with infrastructure, business models, and other aspects. But this is not only about connectivity. We also have a holistic view in the sense of digital inclusion. These are two topics, accessibility on one hand, and also in multilingualism. These are very important topic, particularly in those countries where there are different languages, where different languages are spoken. And the third one is capacity building that has to do with training in technical skills. So as you can see, there is a holistic approach to complex issues work has been done this year on systematization of practices regarding connectivity models in different zones and countries so that people who were not connected can now be connected. This is very important. Like I said, initially, this is useful to build evidence for decision-making processes and purposes my role is to be available so that then decisions can be made in our countries and region. So as a member, what I have done is to submit these calls for inputs in order to have local participation in the case of Peru. This is the case, and I understand this documentation is available globally. This will be most useful in order to understand how models that are alternate models to what we have at present can be applied and can also provide the opportunity to help people become connected. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Great. So I think this reflects the importance of this work. Because we only have 10 minutes left, in the meantime, I'd like to ask those of you who have been following us in this webinar to take this opportunity to ask the panels any questions you might have. I encourage you to ask questions or to make comments, otherwise, let me close with something something simple. For example, basic recommendations, easy recommendations for the purpose of this seminar, of this webinar, to make the most of this meeting. For example, simple things such as registering, or if you'd like to highlight any special session. So I'd like to give you the opportunity to make any comments in that regard. Yes, Ex excuse me, yes. I'd like to start then. I think that one of the most important things 
is that for the in addition to the panels and para criar uma rede de contatos, né? Então, a parte do networking de... IGF is useful to set up a network of specialists e contacts. So, seek specialists to get in touch with people who participate in these debates. There, this is a great opportunity to get to know experts from all over the world who read, who work on topics regarding this. So, for example, If you are in Ethiopia or, or if you are part of this community, this is an excellent opportunity. If you're interested in a given topic or a specific expert that gives a different view on a given topic or how they work on different issues, you can contact these people. People normally answer back. And so this is a great opportunity there will be a session on fragmentation that i'd like to mention you have representatives from all over the world and the un technology group would like to focus on how to avoid having fragmentation of the internet so this is one of the sessions i recommend thank you We'll all be paying attention to that. Some further basic recommendations? Well, Paula, I would say that for those of you who are interested in listening at least or maybe getting in contact with people such as one of the architects of the internet, such as Vint Surf or some of the directors of the Europe, Digital Europe organization or to learn about the experiences of some of the political leaders in Taiwan and Korea who have really driven forward much of the deployment of hardware and software. I would like to encourage you to look up in the headings of those who will be participating in the workshops to see who will be in that workshop. So you can see how you can become involved. It's interesting to contact all these people. You will learn a lot from that. So I encourage you to not only look at the heading of the different workshops, but also who will be the participants so that you can follow some of the discussions and the presentations. Thank you. Great, Karina. Well, I would invite you to register and to see what you can do on the topics of interest. You can download the agenda, it's a dynamic agenda, and you get a notice so you won't miss out any session. I, am the, I work in cybersecurity, so I think everything related to cybersecurity is very important and also protecting your private data as well as all this social dynamic, the dynamics that we have with the internet. Thank you. Roberto, Alan, would you like to add anything? Yes, we have to take into account, as often occurs with the World Cup, depending on the region, you either have to get up very early in the morning or whatever. Now, some sessions will be early in the morning for us. So depending on the topic, there's no way around that. Now. I would like to repeat what Karina just recommended. So this is not only about the, having the option for interaction, but also to include this into your Google Calendar, if that's the calendar you use to register that there. And then you have this as a tool, which you are familiar with. So you will know when the session takes place. In addition to that, a few days ahead, of you will receive the Zoom links. These are personal li Zoom links. That is why 
it's important to pay attention to that registration. Finally, we encourage you to participate. People today not only wish to ask questions, people also wish to participate, and you're all entitled to do so, of course, respecting the times, making comments, and this in any of the sessions you wish to participate in. Thank you. Yes, please do participate. We encourage you to do so. Paula, on my behalf, I think my colleagues have already said everything. I took note of some of the recommendations too. And what I would like to highlight is that because this is such a faraway country, I think it is important to have WhatsApp groups where you can share information. These initiatives are all very important so that we can really work with trust towards the objectives we wish to achieve through the IGF. Thank you very much. I don't have much more to add. Everything has been said, but please check the IGF website so that you can identify those sessions and topics of interest so that you can really participate in this very interesting week so full of many different topics. Those of us who will be participating remotely will also be paying attention to the different times of the sessions. I hope all these sessions have been useful for all of you. Let me check the Q&A box and the chat. I think people were very timid with questions and comments, but nevertheless, thank you very much to all of you for joining us today. I'd also like to say that this webinar has been recorded, so those of you who could not join us will then have this information available in a couple of days. This will be informed through the media. Thank you very much to my colleagues from the MAG, Karina, Roberto, Bruna, Alan, and Amado. Thank you very much for joining us today, for taking the time. Have a safe trip for those who will be participating in person and enjoy the meeting, the IGF Global Meeting. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you, Paula. Thank you. Pasen muy bien. Gracias. Les agradecemos a todos. Chau, chau. Bye. Thank you very much to everyone. Goodbye.